Okay, in case you guys didn't know, Chapel Roan was in the news. She's not endorsing Kamala Harris. It made some people upset. I watched a bunch of TikToks on it. I saw a bunch of people's reviews of it. A lot of people felt like as a white woman from the Midwest, she's in a privileged position not to endorse a political candidate. I will just say as somebody who early on, or at least right when I heard Kamala was running, I did come out and say I'm voting for her. I actually already submitted my vote as an absentee voter overseas. And so hopefully everything goes good with that. I've never done that before, but I've technically, I think already voted. That's my understanding of what I signed the other day. <laughs> this is so new to me, but I have already voted, you know, and that's how I feel about that. And so I made my decision. Now, obviously as a queer person, I made that decision because I fight for the girls, the days, and the abortions. That's kind of my rule of thumb. If you're a candidate who doesn't support basic civil rights, like I am automatically going to probably not vote for you, right? With that said, I understand being in a position of not wanting to endorse a candidate as a public figure or say something about a tragedy happening around the world. There's a lot of pressure involved there. But let's get into this because I'm curious about your opinions as well. What do you guys think about this? It says, this is Vanity Fair. Why Chapel Roan is not endorsing Kamala Harris or Donald Trump or FK Jr. or anyone else. Roan told an interviewer uh, that there's a problem on both sides. So I guess you might say, good luck, babe. Even after Harris used her song in that TikTok. Cool picture of Chapel. Kamala Harris may have used Chapel Roan's song to soundtrack a viral TikTok calling for feminanon at the polls this November, but fans shouldn't hold their breath for a public endorsement anytime soon. While discussing the upcoming U.S. presidential election in an interview with The Guardian published Friday, Roan said that she had so many issues with our government in every way. There are so many things that I would want to change, so I don't feel pressure to endorse somebody. Just to note that Chapel Roan is a lesbian who's pro-Palestine. I think that plays a role in at least understanding where she probably stands on the issues, right? I don't think anyone here is confused about Chapel being like a Trumper or something, right? Okay, it'll take more than that. Sought after Harris, Walls camo ball cap, uh... Camo ball cap, reminiscent of Roan's own The Rise and Fall of the Midwest Princess album merch to win her public support. There's a problem on both sides, she says. Roan, who is a lesbian and has been vocal about her support for trans rights and the other issues, in June dressed as her take on the Statue of Liberty announced from the stage of the Governor's Ball Music Festival in New York that she declined an invite to perform at the White House before dedicating her song My Kink is Karma to the Joe Biden administration. We want liberty, freedom, and justice for all, she said from the stage. Age. When you do that, that's when I'll come. This month, in an interview with Rolling Stone, Roan, re Roan revealed that she'd originally planned to accept the invite and read poems by Palestinian women instead of performing one of her songs as an act of protest, but was talked out of it by her publicist. Quote, I'm not going to go to the White House because I'm not going to be a monkey for pride, she said. She then criticized the Biden administration for walking back stances on gender affirming surgery for transgender youths. Thank God I didn't go because they just made a huge statement about trans kids, she said. In the Guardian interview, she doubled down on trans rights as one of her top issues this election. There cannot they cannot have cis people making decisions for trans people, period, she said. Instead of joining the gr growing list of celebrities endorsing a specific candidate this election, Roan encouraged fans to use critical thinking skills, use your vote, vote small, vote for what's going on in your cities. So obviously she's voting local. She's thinking about local stuff. And I think that that is valid. Now, of course, I understand why people are upset. And you guys know, I think we all live in bubbles and those bubbles are our perceptions and our perceptions dictate how we're playing games and how we are living our lives. And I know what you're thinking. My life isn't a game. And then the irony is, isn't it though? Because they're sure playing our game in this election or they're sure playing a game with our lives in this election. So it feels a little bit like a game. I obviously got up and voted because I'm playing the game too. And I want a more liberal candidate to win. I think the world would be better served as a whole if people were more progressive. That's what I believe as a person. With that said, I still think and I do believe that ultimately all people are on a path of like goodness within their bubble and within their journey. And I think it is probably wrong in a subjective manner to say that somebody is bad for believing a certain religion or having a certain belief. And at the same time, I think... They probably are a little bit wrong. And then the question is, does that matter? So if your game is politics and you want to win this fight, Chapel Roan on your side would have been really great. I already saw Billie Eilish come out. We obviously saw Meg The Stallion come out. Um, Taylor Swift came out. So it's like the women are coming, girl. And they're doing it for us. You know, they're doing it for us. And I appreciate that. 
but also it is a specific game, right? So it's not like Chapel's not going to vote for a presidential candidate. She obviously said vote local. I think that's really valid. That's what I did in the election before this. Now, the election before this, I voted locally and kind of ignored both Biden and Trump. And I stand by that decision. Obviously, this time around, I'll be voting or I did vote for Kamala Harris. Um, and that's what it is. And I voted representing the state of Arizona. Let's go, baby, because that's where I'm a registered uh, voter. That's where I pay my taxes. That's how I do things. And so for me, I think about the importance of that impact in the hopes that Arizona will end up going towards a more liberal position, though, even though traditionally it's been always like a very conservative state. Who knows? Who knows if these things matter? But at least I did the thing that matters within my values, as I think Chapel is herself. And I think everyone's playing a different game with how they move through the world. You know how we talk about moving through the world? This is how Chapel's deciding to move through the world. I actually think it is pretty a, a pretty progressive stance to not endorse a White House candidate in the same way that a, a Hassan Piker gets a lot of backlash from centrists or like basic liberal Democrats. And he's always, you know, oh, you're turning people away from progressive values, Hassan. At the end of the day, if Hassan's really progressive, he's not going to be as happy with Kamala in the same way that I'm not exactly a step like super aesthetic for Kamala Harris, but I'm also incredibly motivated to cast my vote for her because overall, I do think she's the better candidate. And so I think I'm more progressive as well, where I think from Hassan and Chapel's perspective, there's they might be Democrats and they might be liberals, but more than that, they're progressives. And I think people forget that there is a clash of values here from the centrist Democrat, the centrist liberal to the progressive mindset. So just like keep that in mind. But, you know, I wish people were more progressive. I think Hassan socially isn't as progressive as like I would hope, but at the same time, like it's not my business what another content creator is doing with their personal, like personal platform in that way. You know, his, like Hassan is sharing his own personal perspective and I appreciate that. But more than that, I appreciate hearing from progressive voices that are thinking about what it feels like to vote for another centrist in a way or another liberal woman. Like Kamala Harris is great and I like her, but she's not a progressive. So I, I just don't, I guess that perspective is being lost on a lot of people. Now, sometimes in my audience, you guys will ask me, like, what if I vote for a third party? Vote however you want. You're going to die. I just want to remind everybody, you're going to die. And not in a nihilistic way, in a radical acceptance way. Do what you can with what you can within your values and hope for the best. But if you attack Chaperone for not voting, like, she might as well die. It, not to be dramatic because I'm such a ner neurodivergent dramatic queen, but it's just so silly. It's so silly. You act like Chapel Roan, this one little person, right, is going to do this great. So how do you maintain happiness and joy regardless of what someone else is doing? You keep doing your life, girl. If you spend time being negative towards Chapel Roan, you're just contributing to more misogyny and issues with women. You're just attacking another queer person. Like that's the irony. That's all you're doing. And so at the end of the day, you got to keep going, regardless of what Blair White does or even a Chapel Roan, you got to keep living your life, girl. Don't attack other women and other queer people because they're, quote, not living up to your standard. It's so interesting to me when this happens and minority communities do it all the time. I just watched a whole TikTok. Uh, um, it was like black parents talk about trans issues in schools. And it was like black community members were talking about how they don't want trans issues shoved down their kids' throats and how they might vote Trump to keep trans education out of schools to protect their kids. Minority v. minorities always be attacking each other. And so at the end of the day, like, I don't care what you're doing. I don't care if you're transphobic. I need to do what I got to do. We all got to do what we got to do. And at the end of the day, like, there is no monolith to our existence. And I do think you are more than your skin color. You are more than your gender. You are more than your politics. Politics is a reaction to other people. You being afraid to be a skin color is a reaction to other people. You being afraid to be gay is a reaction to other people. So again, when I look at this situation and I see a lesbian who's in the media trying to live her life and already just recently got diagnosed with depression and she's going through it, I don't care what she's doing because I'm already doing me. I do not care what any of these social media people are doing. I know what I'm doing. And I really encourage you to do the same. I don't care what Taylor Swift is doing. I don't care what Billie Eilish is doing. I'm doing me. 
And I already voted for Kamala. So she got my vote. But she doesn't have my vote because we align one to one. She has my vote because I think she's the better of the two candidates, which is very specific. Very specific. Okay. Oh, good point. Chat says she also has bipolar disorder and she's neurodivergent queen in her 20s, guys. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? The last thing I want to do, it's punch down on some neurodivergent person who's going through it right now. You know, like not interested, not interested. Okay. So regardless of what they are doing, you got to do you. This is why I say, and I have so many podcasts coming about that, coming up about this. I don't care what the world is doing. I'm just going to keep doing me. Now, I don't say I don't care, meaning I don't pay attention. I'm paying attention, girl. It just isn't going to infiltrate my joy. I'm not going to let it infiltrate my joy. I'm still going to do me. I'm going to do me even though it hurts, even though other people are suffering. And I, and I, you know, I almost want to let that destroy my life. I'm not going to. And that's what we do sometimes. We allow the suffering of others to destroy ourselves. That's unwise suffering. You want to learn to suffer wisely. This isn't about me. This is about humanity. And I owe it to humanity to live my best life. We owe it to humanity to live our best lives because if people were living their best lives and in their joy, we wouldn't be doing this to one another. The irony is fear is the root of all evil because fear keeps you away from your joy, right? And joyful people don't do this to one another. Joyful people aren't out here trying to take away people's civil rights, it's people who are afraid. I'm afraid my kids will be exposed to trans people. I'm afraid my kids might be gay. I'm afraid my kids might have an abortion. I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid. I know. Joyful people who are not afraid can relax knowing other people are living differently from them. As long as everybody doesn't try to murder, imprison, take away rights, ostracize, fire, discriminate against people who are living differently. Live differently but not at the expense of others to the best of your ability. And this is the conundrum of being a human. We really do struggle because it's impossible to live a life where you do not cause a certain amount of harm. On the planet, every time you flush down something you shouldn't in your toilets, an issue with how you do, do you see these TikToks that are going viral right now about batteries? How many of y'all throw your batteries in the normal trash can? Because let me tell you, we're not supposed to be doing that. You know what I'm saying? Like all these things that we do that we don't even think about because it just seems outrageous that we'd be, you know, everything we're doing causes a, a certain amount of harm. And I just want to encourage you as individuals to do the least amount of harm. And that includes not attacking a bipolar, depressed, neurodivergent, recently famous star who, in my opinion, how she votes doesn't change how I vote. Okay. What chaperone doesn't, like, what she does or doesn't do does not affect how I vote. Okay? So vote within your values and call it a day. Because that's what everybody else is doing. Even the people who vote for Trump. Okay? Okay. With that said, any thoughts? Any comments? Why do people think that we need to ask or listen to every celebrity political opinion taker is crazy to me? I, I think it's really normal for us to hope that the people we like also are similar to us. It's, it's like a little bit of parasociality where we hope the celebrities we watch and listen to are voting like us or, or think about life like us. That's why it's so painful when somebody you like, you find out is like homophobic. You're like, oh, what? Ew. And then you wonder, like, should I keep, you know, enjoying their music? Same thing with Diddy. Like, same thing with every star that was out those Diddy freak-offs. It's like, do I stop listening to all these people's music? Like, a lot of people just got tainted over this week. I look at everybody a little differently, which, by the way, coincides with this idea where I tell you being a celebrity is not the greatest thing in the world. And shout out to the parents that keep their kids away from it. Shout out to the parents that keep their kids away from this industry because this industry will eat them alive. And I do look at parents who put their kids in this industry with an raised eyebrow, okay? But of course we look to, the, to these people to sort of validate us. Of course we look to these people and think, well, you must know something, I don't know, what do you know? And look, ultimately, and I think, and we're gonna go into this after this story, we're gonna talk about political streamers. We do watch content creators. I mean, I even get questions every day in my inbox. Brittany, what do you think about this? Brittany, what do you think about this? Brittany, what do you think about this? And what that's saying to me is, as a community member, we're asking each other, which is good. 
But I hope you're never asking me from like a pedestal position, but also anytime you've got somebody in the community who's an elder, who's older than you, who's, you know, got more wisdom than you, obviously you look to them and you're hoping like, do you have an answer I don't have? And then what we do is we project that onto celebrities. We think because they have high monetary status or famous status, we think they must know something we don't know. Maybe, but probably not, but maybe. It's hard. It's hard because so much of this is playing into our idea that if you are the top of the food chain in a way that makes you seem like you are, you must know the most as well. But that's just not true. It's not true. What did Tim Pool say the other day? If you're smart, you would be a millionaire. <sighs> if only. If only it worked that way, right? Some of the smartest people I know are too busy in a research lab, minding their own business. You know what I mean? Like, and also for the people in the chat that are asking if Chaperone can even sing, she can sing, girl. She can sing, let me tell you. She can sing. You might not like her music, you know, but she can sing. And that's, that is just a fact. You know, if you don't like her music, it is what it is. Right? And also, like, when Chaperone says there's issues on both sides, I think she is coming from a progressive perspective. And I think that's true. If you're a progressive, oh, both sides are shit, bro. But one side is less. And that is how humans work. That is how everybody works, not just in politics, but in our everyday life. Everybody's a little bit better than somebody else, but nobody is perfect. Okay, you're voting for the lesser of two evils. You're also just voting for the less imperfect one because you're never going to have a perfect political system. You're never going to have a perfect world. You're never going to have a world without evil. You yourself hold evil inside of you. Evil is not a, a, a magical demonic thing. It's a, a, a place of being outside of your joy. When you're in your evil, you're also giving into temptation. Your desire to punch down and like look at Chapel Roan as a piece of that's your evil, bro. You're in evil right now. And that's the irony, right? If you go for Chapel Roan over who she votes for, you are engaging in your evil and you contribute to the evil of the world because ultimately everyone is doing what they're doing out of fear and out of values and out of thinking that they know what's going on. Nobody knows what's going on any more than you know what's going on. And that is the hardest truth for any of us to follow. Chad says, when I ask for someone's perspective, it's usually out of curiosity. Like I think the issue is something interesting that could clash or reinforce someone's known views. Same, I love asking for people's opinions. What do you think? Let's dissect it. I would love it. That's true. I ask most people for their opinion because I'm curious. I also personally think everyone has something to teach me. So I think that also plays a role. Like I don't think I, I, I just think every single person on the planet has something to teach me, whether it's about new boundaries or something new about myself, but that's my belief, you know? See, Chet says, I feel like both sides bad is a pretty normal take. Uh, it's a pretty centrist take. It's a pretty common take, but it's usually a red flag to progressives. So when progressives hear like both sides have problems, it usually can be a red flag, which is interesting, right? Like that is interesting. But I think to centrists, that makes sense because they want to hate everybody, but then they always end up, we all end up choosing the thing that's closest to us. Lots of, lots of usually Republicans will say like both sides suck, but I'm voting for Trump because he will lower my tax. And so it, it, it's a pretty, it can be like a yellow red flag where I'm like, mm. but then there's the part where people miss it, where you go beyond the centrist pers perspective and you're actually at the progressive perspective and the progressive perspective is both sides suck. Because like Democrats are not really fighting for your civil rights in the way they say, because the status quo also won't let them in the same way that America won't. You always need a little bit of extremism to move people past their norm, but also it can be a little tedious because it feels like you're shoving things down their throats, but also everybody feels that way. Literally Catholics and Christians bitch all the time that their civil rights are under attack, that people are aiming for them, that people are trying to, you know, take away their churches. Look, you want to save America, make churches pay tax so they can keep being political in churches. Because I'll tell you, the Catholic churches I grew up in my whole life always told you how to vote and always mentioned politics. I don't know why anyone's under this illusion that churches aren't talking about politics. You're absolutely delusional. Every single time I've even recently gone back to church with my parents because I do this sometimes with my mom to say like, you're welcome. Anyways, always told you how to vote, always mentioned politics, told you the bill number, who the candidate, everything. Take away their tax exemption so they can talk about politics, but they still have to contribute to the economy. Okay. Start there. Give everyone basic civil rights that unless you are directly harming a child, 
in a way that is specific, you're allowed to live your life as a gay person, a trans person, a Christian person, a Muslim person. Then we can talk about how science is starting to show the damage religion is doing, including, but not limited to, maybe transitioning your kids too young. Also, transition doesn't always mean medical. Usually it means aesthetically. Learn what words mean. And let's all agree that we want Americans to have basic civil rights, healthcare, housing, food, water, shelter. And then we can talk about how the world would be better. These churches are making money, especially these mega churches, off poor people who are begging for God to cure their basics when their basics could be handled by distributing funds correctly. So you want to save America? You want to make American men who are feeling neglected in the system actually inspired to go out and work again? Give them jobs that are meaningful. You want women to feel happy with the way that they're aging and you want them to have more children? Make it accessible and affordable. At the end of the day, plenty of people would be willing to have babies if you gave them places they could actually rent without feeling like it's taking 70% of their income. We act like the world is so complicated when you simply need to take care of your people and you're not doing that. Instead, you're spending our money moving into Lebanon and helping Israel bomb people. Like, what is your problem? Politics is a shitty game. It's a shitty game and it doesn't care about you. It cares about winning. It does not care about humanity. And this is why, again, I don't involve myself in politics because it's not interested in your humanity. It is simply interested in winning. And look, I'll never give up my American passport and I might be double taxed, but let me tell you, America is not looking like an exciting place to move back to. If when I move there, I'm going to have to worry about my health care again, worry about groceries, worry about my rent. I'm not going to be able to function because even though I'm making a pretty goddamn good salary, it's not enough. Like, what do you mean it's not enough? I'm not making six figures here, but goddamn, I'm making close enough. You should be able to live off that. And if you can't, something got fucked up in the system. No middle class American should be feeling this fucking desperate for either their weekend to start their Monday never to come, or God forbid, their fear of going to a hospital, even today. You know how I know I'm an American? Because even though I'm, one of the, I'm, in, I'm living in one of the safest countries in Europe, I'm constantly afraid I'm going to get shot at the store. I am literally terrified of going to the doctor, even though my husband keeps telling me, Brittany, you're not going to have to pay for this. You already pay for healthcare. I pay $80 euro a month, and I am still so scared to go to the doctor. I'm like terrified, okay? And it's one of those things where I'm sitting here like battling all these American anxieties. There are people I know in the education system who are thinking about not going back to teaching because of the amount of school shootings that are happening. America wants a stronger America. Take care of the middle class and uplift the people in poverty out of poverty. You're so afraid of tax dollars going to these poor people that are allegedly going to use all of your resources. It would cost you less money to house them. It would cost you less money to give everybody health care. Also, really basic take, super brave of me to say as a kid who was homeschooled for 15 years, you're not qualified to homeschool your kids. With peace and love, you are not qualified to homeschool your kids. And the worst part is instead of sending your kids to a school you don't even want to send them to because the education is indoctrinating them, you'll send other people's kids to school with guns. Very cool. Very good. Love that. Love America. Love her. I love her. USA. USA. Regardless of what the world is doing, stay within your joy because it's always going to be this way. It's going to change. It's going to ebb and flow. We're going to go back and forth. It is going to change, but it's always going to be the same. We're just in another cycle. So make sure you wake up every day happy and go to bed every day happy, regardless of what's happening around you, because it's the only thing you can control. And then we do our best to contribute. Even with all of this happening, let me tell you, as a girl who's now 35, this sh would have made me depressed and self-harming on my kitchen floor 10 years ago. And now I eat my chicken breast, I lift my weights, I go the f to sleep, and I wake up and I do it all over again, and I do not cry. I do not self-harm, and it does not ruin my day, okay? Because regardless of what all these people are doing, I still can control myself. So with peace and love, Okay, with peace and love. Okay, Discord says a little behind, but it feels like people just want to gang up on Chapel for everything she shares recently. There's an understandable desire to not want to support horrible people, but it feels like we've lost the plot on what that means. You know, it's hard to say. With everything coming out with these celebrities, it's hard to know who to trust. And I'm going to say nobody, because you don't know these 
is. Like, you don't know these humans. And so I would say, you know, again, you remember how, you know, how in this community we always talk about who slides into your DMs, who don't you answer? You don't answer Diddy. That's for sure. Chris Brown, I'm not answering that tweet or that DM or that what I'm... There are just certain people you do not answer the DMs. Leonardo DiCaprio, you do not answer that DM. So don't tell me everyone is sitting here on their horror, like moral high ground while they're answering the DMs from these celebrities because they got like a, a whiff of adrenaline or dopamine from the fact that someone famous DM them. Everyone is trying to sit here on their moral high ground, but the moment those celebrities slide into your DMs, I bet you're answering. And let me just tell you, do not answer. But if Chaperone slid into my DMs, you know what? I would answer that DM because at the end of the day, Chaperone is not the problem. She just has enough problems that she's learning to cope with them. The girl is going through it. Let this woman live her life and go through it. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Then